started it off. Yeah, you're good. I'm going to go and just share my slides to start with here. How's that, Mary Beth? Uh, it's just fine. Let me get rid of that backdrop for you. And I will say that the session is live. Go ahead okay. and get started. You're in uh, not in presenter mode, though. Huh. I am on my screen. Yeah. Um, I can't make it any larger. Uh, at any rate, I'm going to go ahead and kick this, this session off. Um, this is Session 8, the Geo Aqua Watch organization. Um, we're going to spend some time looking at the uh, Geo Aqua Watch, its, uh, touch on its governance structure, some of our past accomplishments, um, where we want to go, our objectives, um, a whole variety of things. And we have a, a number of folks from the, the Aqua Watch teams, the, from the working groups and our node to again share with you um, some of their work. Um, before I get started, I'd like to just take a couple minutes here um, to uh, recognize Arnold Decker. Um, Arnold Decker has uh, been co-chair and a member of our executive committee for the past 15 years. Um, so again, just to deviate from the program a bit, I want to recognize uh, one of our long-term members here. Um, Arnold Decker, as many of you know, whose name is, is somewhat uh, synonymous with um, remote sensing, uh, water quality remote sensing, and with Geo Aqua Watch, um, is stepping down from his position with us uh, here in the near future. Um, Arnold has brought uh, an era of professionalism. He has helped us uh, up our game, if you will, um, in this organization. Um, he, he's brought a, a wealth of knowledge. Um, I know he's been a mentor to me um, and we're all going to, to miss him. Um, you know, he has this, uh, I'll call it an uncanny ability to uh, look at issues from a, a variety of, of perspectives, which has been refreshing. Um, and his, his somewhat uh, sometimes provocative candor um, has helped us think outside the box. So he's a, he's a good friend and, and colleague um, to many of us, and, and we're going to miss him. There's a few pictures of him. This was these pictures below here were taken in, uh, at our first Aqua Watch meeting, which it wasn't called Aqua Watch then back in 2007, uh, Geneva. You can see he's, he's sitting up front um, um. in charge here. Steve, let me interrupt you. You you are not um, progressing uh, in your slides, so um, I, I think it's just no. Uh, we're not seeing anything change on our screen. Okay. So maybe um, get out of the full screen and just click through your slides. Yeah. Great. Now we're seeing that that slide. Go ahead and pick back up again. Sorry to interrupt. Thank okay. You. No, thank you. So um, again, he's been uh, committed to Aqua Watch and has been, you know, had to help lead this effort for for 15 years now. It's hard to believe um, it's been 15 years since we started this group. Um, In recognition of her work, we have found a few, well, I should say Mary Beth has found a few unique gifts we want to share with, with Arnold. On the left is a, a, a bud vase. It was, it's a hand carved or turned on a lathe um, using some uh, native uh, woods from, from Australia. Um, and uh, 
you can see it, it comes to, comes to us from the South Coast uh, Woodworks Gallery. The second item on, on the right side is this, um, I just thought it was an amazing um, item. It's this hand folded book and uh, this person has, has again folded the pages of the book to represent the space satellite. Um, so these are small tokens of our appreciation for, for Arnold and, and all his work that he's done um, for us over the past 15 years. And I think um, Paul is, can you connect Paul or is Paul out there? I've, yeah, I'm here, can you hear me? Perfect. Not yes, sure if you ahead. can see me, but uh, better if you can't see me. Um, so yeah, thank you, Steve. And I, you know, to echo everything you said, and just for everyone to know, you know, again, this is over 15 years. We've Steve and I have been working with Arnold, and truly, it's just been a sincere, a privilege and a pleasure and and an honor to work with them. And and as Steve said, I likewise have learned so much from Arnold, and the leadership that he's in service that he's given to our our broader international community is just astounding. And, you know, these are things that don't always get seen. Um, and we, you know, we see them in the meetings, but just for all of you to know the behind the scenes work, a labor of love, you know, Arnold has donated, you know, even after retire, retirement, um, you know, just hundreds of hours to Aquawatch because he just cares about, you know, the, the topic, the, the criticality of the topic and advancing the community. And just to, to recognize him for that. So Steve, like Arnold, thank you so much for everything. Uh, we know it's not goodbye per se. Um, you know, we'll, we'll still be um, crossing paths out there, but just in terms of your formal service to Aquawatch and thank you on behalf of the entire community, Arnold. So we appreciate it. Thank you, Paul, for those words. And um, I don't know if, if Arnold, I, mean, I know he's online there, but if he, wanted to respond for 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 a minute um, you'd have to raise your hand because you're not on the stage and mary beth would have to um, elevate him to the stage i i have my hands tied because i have this presentation open and so um, what's happening there hello 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 there he is. <laughs> yeah here i am so i guess i was online and um Thank you very much. That was uh, that's highly appreciated. It's been a fantastic journey um, from the inception of the I think it was the inland and coastal water working group for Geo Aquawatch right through to what for Aquawatch for Geo right through to Geo Aquawatch as it is now. And I really think it's it's been a great journey, and and I've also enjoyed thoroughly working together with Steve and Paul, Mary Beth and Emily Smell. Um, great team to work with. But I also think, you know, it's time the new generation took over. And I must say, I was extremely happy to see the early early career researcher session yesterday. There was so much enthusiasm, so much dynamism, dynamicism from the early career researchers. And I think they need to start getting involved and start leading this into the future. But thank you very much. And thanks for all the um, message uh, responses as well. It's uh, it's it's highly appreciated, and uh, yeah, I wish Geo Aquawatch the best of luck, of course, and and success going forward. Thank you, Arnold. Much appreciated. Okay, I'm going to continue on. Um, next slide is, is to start Aquawatch mission, and this the statement somewhat um, parallels with the. Uh, Douglas talked about from the Geo Secretariat, um, our mission being to improve the coordination, delivery, and utilization of water quality information for the benefit of society. And if we drill down a little bit, our goal, uh, and again, you can read it as, as well as I can, but, uh, you know, kind of promote um, and help build on this, uh, the our capacity to use Earth observation um, for the development of to support our end users, whoever they may be. Now, I know when we get to the working group um, reports, I think Karsten might um, talk a little bit about some plain language um, rewrites of some of these things to make it more 
maybe less uh, kind of institutional, but make it more clear for uh, you know a variety of people and users more in um, um, a common language. So we can we'll have discussions about that. So w within Aqua Watch, uh, there's been five objectives that we have worked on. All, all five of these objectives are backed up or uh, by groups. Um, and these follow somewhat of a sequential pattern, um, you know, starting at the top where we, we start with understanding the end user needs. And we've heard a lot about that the last couple of days. Um, then moving down to observations and data where it's not just um, this integration of in situ and remote sensing, but all the, how we, how we obtain those, those, that raw data, be it, you know, some of the sensor technology um, and, uh, you know, the transfer of this data um, and uh, repositories where this data is located. And then products and information, which I think probably most of you, um, this is the, your biggest interest. Uh, that's the work going on in working group three. But in the, um, the products to their needs by the end users. Um, the fourth working group is the technology transfer, you know, working on things like the visualization tools and these portals um, to be able to get that information out effectively. And finally, um, advocate for increased education um, and capacity. This is the work of working group five, and we heard from them again on day one, and we're seeing this more and more attention spent on this fifth uh, working group. If we look at the kind of the current model or conceptual model, how we Aqua Watch works, we see again, we're in this sphere of communication, coordination and collaboration. These five working groups would be the dark maroon um, circles. And we don't see this as much a, a linear model as a circular model where there's feedback and interaction between these say working groups and all this feeds into you know, what we would term the water quality information service this is our just a brief uh, overview of our organizational structure as it stands today and again i i'm sharing this with you again just to refresh your memory of how we work but also when we get into um, our breakout session there'll be a series of questions as to you know what's working and what's not and are there improvements that can be made organizationally? So we have uh, the director, myself, and secretariat at the top. Um, we have an executive committee, um, which advises us along with the, uh, the newly created uh, regional and thematic nodes. And we'll, we'll talk about them in a minute. Um, again, the rationale for these nodes was to somewhat um, you know, flatten the organizational structure and also, um, again, maybe diverse the, uh, you know, the work that's going on um, with NGO Aqua Watch and, and, and get it to out into the regions or the, the expertise that have a better sense for, for what's happening in those regions. Um, it can be more responsive to the needs. Um, under there, we, we have both the steering committee and the management committee. The steering committee is more of our external partners. And again, provide us with guidance, um, talking of, of issues and, and directions, help steer the Geo Aqua Watch. The management um, committee essentially is composed of myself, um, uh, someone from the steering committee, the working group chairs, and uh, also these newly created regional thematic nodes. And finally at the bottom is, uh, you know, these are, this is the workhorse uh, horses of our group. There are the working groups and, and focus groups, and they are comprised for the most part of these five working groups that I previously mentioned. I'm not gonna go through all this, um, but this is just, uh, you know, off the top of our head, um, some of the activities that we worked on over the past year. Um, there's been you know, papers published by working groups. 
Um, we've had focus groups working on atmospheric correction algorithm approaches, guidance papers, um, compiling citizen science efforts. We have spent a, a lot of time doing uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion metrics. I'll talk about that a little bit more in a, in a minute. Um, suffice to say that these are central to our program planning and they enter into the discussion of, of all of our activities now. Um, we've had a couple Google Earth Engine projects, one out of Brazil and uh, one held out of the, the GEO uh, Aqua Watch Secretariat here that uh, you heard about yesterday in one of the um, pro um, posters. Um, we had an incredible um, seven webinar series this past year. Um, at one point, we had these four 90 minute um, um, webinars where we showed, uh, we showcased uh, new projects that were going on, and it was quite successful. Um, Arnold talked the other day about the Analysis Ready Data Focus Group, um, which uh, is, has really helped, um, again, establish Geo Aqua Watch and um, how uh, CS has really relied on us for, for guidance and information. Um, we're part of the CS Coast effort. Um, we have spent time getting together and now it's, it's coming to fruition. Um, we're, we are co-sponsoring a NASA workshop on sal satellite validation, which will take place um, here at uh, University of Wisconsin in Madison this coming June. Um, I, I bring this up because there's a deadline if you want to attend or you can submit a expression of interest, just go to our website and, and fill out the, the short form. And finally, we, we worked uh, with the World Bank. We had a small contract with the World Bank to provide them with uh, uh, some information on satellite resources for the African Great Lakes. So again, I want to touch just a minute on our DEI efforts. Um, I think I had, you know, we previously talked about um, how um, DEI is, is, is important to AquaWatch. We have spent a lot of time um, both in not just developing the net, but all um, um, some metrics. And we did this just because we didn't want to just um, you know, talk the talk, but we wanted to put in um, some objective measures that uh, we can say that uh, we are meeting or areas where we need to, to improve on. You know, we're committed to in our core values and proactively ensure our membership better reflects this commitment by being more inclusive of science and scientists from all geographic areas around the world. So um, these are just two slides which quickly show our um, some of the metrics and kind of assessment of where we're at. Um, one of our metrics had to do with webinars um, where we seek seek gender parity and of underrepresented in science. Um, we will say we're on track, but we could from all six regions. I also just FYI, this is uh, the metric summary as of March uh, 2022, which would be some time to go before the end of the year. I'm sorry, Steve, just uh, would recommend that you turn off your video camera uh, because it is um, seriously impacting your audio. Huh. Um, yeah, so just turn that off and um, I'll be happy to answer any um, questions on the DEI. I think uh, definitely uh, we would like to have um, some volunteers to help improve our membership. Uh, in working groups, our leadership um, from this meeting. Uh, and um, we have many, many positions that are open, especially for early career. Um, and then um, also, if you have a webinar that you would like to uh, present that's related to water quality, just reach out to me. I'll put my email in the chat. We can, um, you can help us get our DEI metrics back on track. Steve, you can go to the next slide, which I think shows that we're all on track for all of those. 
Thanks. Can you see it? Yes, we do. Um, you can you can take over now. Thank oh, you. oh, okay. I thought you were going to continue on. Um, so, and again, these are continuation of our metrics. We are um, our goal in the first one here was to hold activities to engage and recruit at least two dedicated early career focused activities per year and led by early careers. So we are on track in, in that w uh, way. And the, the second and, and third um, metrics here deal with the social media. The first one, social media and website promotion of DEI activities. Uh, with our target being at least 5% of the original social media posts to be promoted of GeoAquaWatch DEI opportunities and activities. Um, and we're on track there. You can see the statistics. Uh, and secondly, the social media and website promotion projects um, our target at least 25% of the original social media posts to be promoted by GeoAquaWatch projects by groups under underrepresented in science, women scientists, um, and, and early career scientists. So again, we're on track there. So it's it's good, um, and we appreciate all you, all of you that have contributed to this um, over the past uh, nine months, and uh, hopefully we reach our goals by the end of the year. Um, so that was pretty much what I wanted to, the overview I wanted to give. I just wanted to point out these are questions that will come in our breakouts. And again, I would strongly encourage you to attend those breakouts because this is your opportunity to help chart the course for AquaWatch uh, in the coming years. And the, the, they'll, be, they'll be broken into two parts, if you will. One is focused more on our organizational structure, whether you think there should be changes what's working, what's not, um, should we recraft the objectives, and and are there funding opportunities that you know of to help support our programmatic activities? And the second one is on out there that we can um, address collectively, um, and then we identify and set the, the priorities for those and how we can accomplish them. And again, what resources can uh, the community bring to help uh, make these uh, to tackle these issues? Um, so with that, I'm going to quit um, and get out of here. I have to find my slot here again. Uh, so at this point, I'd, we'd like to introduce um, the new AquaWatch Regional in thematic nodes. Um, I see Andrew is, is online. So first we'll go to Andrew from University of Sterling. Very good. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I've just got a few slides here just to, just to introduce uh, this. Um, just make sure that works. Just a moment. Uh, it's a bit slow. Can you see anything at all? We do not just yet. And, um... Let us know. You may want to, to choose the option to share a PDF if you have slides. It was really slow for me to load. Oh, my goodness, it is slow. Um, OK, well, um, well, I'll just introduce. We've only got a couple of minutes, I think, haven't we, uh, um, Steve? So, Yes, so first of all, thanks very much for, for um, obviously uh, accepting our application to be the European node for the GEO Aqua Watch. I have a few slides here just to, by, by way of introdu introduction, but clearly um, the system is incredibly slow at the moment. I just, just think by, just to give you an overview that, you know, obviously we've been working in a, the Earth observation perspective for many years. 
uh, we had a real uh, uh, jump in our capability when we uh, secured the Global Lakes project, which was back in 2012 with partners across the UK, including Plymouth Marine Lab, and uh, co-led with uh, Steve Groom, who's also on the on, on the panel here, uh, where we really pioneered in using Earth observation to uh, to look at water quality at the global scale and targeted a thousand lakes around the world to understand how they're changing in response to climate change, and the only uh, one of the key reasons why this was a success was because of the collaboration and partnerships that we built across the uh, the global Earth observation community. And we were fortunate and uh, that uh, at the same time as this being funded, that the Diversity 2 program uh, uh, that uh, Carsten led, as well as the GLASS project th through FP7 that le was led by Steve Peters, also funded at the same time, um, <clears throat> so that we could actually bring some of our resources together to really help drive uh, drive that mission forward and so that everyone really benefit from that. And that really then built that sort of global set of collaboration uh, where we were able to share data, bring data together, uh, which is now hosted in the Limnades database, uh, for a sort of community-owned database where we can share data uh, for satellite calibration validation, hydrochemical data, bioptical data, for example. Um, but then this, this project then led to, to many, many more projects. Um, and I think I just, on, on the screen here, I just, we're gonna, gonna highlight just a few of those, um, which were really quite uh, uh, transformative in terms of research and innovation opportunity. And the first of those was um, a program that I've been working with since 2011, and that's uh, Danubius, um, Danubius Research Infrastructure, which, as you can probably guess, the name was originally focused in the Danube, but uh, helped drive forward to be a pan-European infrastructure to understand these river sea systems, estuaries, coastal lagoons, and um, uh, uh, deltas, for example. And that then, as I said, became a pan-European infrastructure uh, with, you know, growing the Steve, Andrew has um, had difficulties, so perhaps you can go to the next. Okay. Um, while we're waiting to get Andrew back on, is uh, Igor, are you out there? Could you share? Yeah, I'm here. So, hi, everyone. So, um, Igor and uh, at IGB, Leibniz Institute for Freshwater Ecology and Inland, uh, Inland Fisheries. And we are hosting a thematic node for GeoAquaWatch on calibration and validation. And our idea, especially because we are in a limnological institution, so getting a lot of in situ data, is to establish a community uh, to engage with calibration and validation activities. Uh, as Andrew mentioned, there is a lot of data already on eliminators, for example, as a database, but we know that there is a lot of more data that we can get. So during working working group two, I uh, present an idea that we will start as a future uh, work on this node, as well as in the working group two. But we plan to reach more more people and not only and uh, but we are not going to ask for data but we're going to ask for metadata so people are tending to share more metadata than data so that's mostly the goals we are going to work on this node establishing this community i think from from my from my side is this is steve Steve, are you out there? 
Apparently not. We just lost his connection as well. Okay. Um, uh, Andrew, I see that you're back. Um, are you able to continue your uh, presentation? Andrew? Well, we are just losing people. Right. Oh, Steve, are you back? Steve? Steve? Okay. Um, all right. Let's uh, go to um, working okay, group. I, I seem to have lost audio. Steve, we hear you. Do you hear us? Steve? Steve? Okay, um, let's go ahead to, uh, I believe the next thing on the agenda was um, working group presentations. So, um, Gada, um, or, or whoever uh, person do you want to present? Uh, yeah, I can, I can start with working group Great. one, that's okay. Yes, thank you. Working group okay, one, sir. good place I, to start. Sorry? I said it's a good place to start with number one. Okay, good. Um, I will share screen. I hope it will work. Looks good. Yes. Eh? Okay. So let's cross fingers. Okay, so this is a short introduction of Working Group 1, already um, mentioned by, by Steve. Um, we are concerned with outreach and user engagement. Currently, we are composed like this, um, co-leading by Emily Smale and myself, Carsten Brockmann from Brockmann Consult in Germany. And uh, we have a good number of uh, very active working group members who you can see here, and some of them already talked during, during this week. So our mission statement of this working group is to be responsible for outreach to the users existing users and potential new users of water quality data products and derived information. And um, our, our objective uh, and the main output is to develop and, and implement a communication strategy, which includes collecting requirements for water quality products and services. And on the first day, we have heard a report. Advocacy of Earth observation in support of water quality monitoring and forecasting. So go out and tell what we're doing. And in general, engage of uh, um, general engagement of diverse actors across the globe, um, as you can see in, in this meeting, is that we have scientists, users, managers, and so on. So the addressees of our communication, the users, and this was one of the in initial work to really identify who. Who are we talking to? Who are we addressing in uh, GeoCo? What is Earth observation scientists, which can be individuals and other Earth observation experts, um, organizations as a whole, public or private, doing evaluating on Earth observations, organizations using water quality information, like environmental protection agencies, consultants, and business such as water supply, fishery, and so on, and the general public. So the communication strategy, we formulated a number of key messages to make it easy to communicate what's Aqua Watch doing. And, and this is, let's say, also evolving. And we have seen we're, we're thinking to revise the statements a little bit. Um, but, but these are five key sentences which we developed. So first, the goal of Aqua Watch is to develop and build the global capacity and utility of Earth observation derived water quality data, products, and information to support water resource management and decision making. AquaWatch is providing best practice and guidelines on usage of water quality products and community agreed recommendations on available algorithms, their applicability and limits. AquaWatch is supporting education and capacity building. AquaWatch is actively facilitating identification of funding opportunities and connecting partnerships. 
So these are the five things you need to remember if someone is asking you, what's our coach doing? And um, what do we want to achieve by communicating these messages? People should be motivated to engage with our coach and contribute to the activities, get people interested to find out more about uh, our coach and use our guidelines, and get people interested to find out more about or use our education and capacity building material. Uh, okay, so what are we going to do in this year? And um, I, I think it was the first activity in January that we talked about the work goals for 2022, and we have um, four or five actions. <laughs> I forgot, I will see it in a minute. So action one is work on impact. We we have achieved a lot, as you have seen from Steve's. Um, from, hello? Oh, okay, so from Steve's. Steve's uh, presentation showcases AquaWatch, collect examples from visual materials, and to demonstrate the impact and demonstrate and explain what's the impact that we have here and why this is important. So I th think by the end of this year, we should have a couple of good showcases that we can use to these objectives. Then um, continue and intensify working on training events together with working group five. Um, and here we want to facilitate or capitalize uh, specifically on the virtual lab, which was a development by Prime Water and demonstrated in a webinar. Action three is to do a user requirement synthesis, which means compile a meta report based on existing reports. Um, and this was very nice to see. Uh, and on the first day, this was mentioned in the chat window that it would be great if such a synthesis would be done. And actually, we have this since January on our action list in working group one. And then action four is to develop a catch-up phrase and an elevator speech, which starts from the five sentences I, I, I just presented to you and make it even simpler and having a catchphrase, three to five words that describe Aqua Watch um, and an elevator speech. So if we have only 30 seconds, then we can explain it. And please enter your ideas for this catchphrase on the Miro, uh, Miro board now. Uh, as uh, Mary Beth has indicated in the chat. So how do we operate? Um, we have monthly virtual meetings. We meet every third Friday of the month for one hour. We review our action status. We talk about new emerging topics and take decision what's done in the next month. Uh, the actions, as I, I presented, um, there should be one responsible person per action, not doing the job but driving it and that person will be supported by all working group one members and the whole AquaWatch community. And um, in the past, we had a very close interaction with the AquaWatch management team, in particular Mary Beth and Steve, um, really being very active in this working group. So for our four action lines, we have Mary Beth being in charge, a responsible person for action four, but we have open positions for action one, two, and three. If you're interested, please um, Contact Mary Beth or myself if you're interested either to join the working group or to take responsibility for one of the actions. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Karsten. And again, I apologize for some of these technical issues. Um, I myself was was in some black hole there for about five minutes, so I missed out on it. But um, I see we've we've gone on and started the working group. So um, as suggested, we're going to finish the working groups and then go back. Um, Jeremy has joined us, and and, and I, I'm not sure I, Igor, who's actually up next, if he wants to finish up anything he wanted to say about his thematic node and then talk about working group two, that would be great. <laughs> Sure. Uh, well, I think I already finished my my talk about the okay. node, but I will. Uh, it's a complementary thing on working group two. I will just share here if I can find. So, working group two is led by uh, Philip Sale. And I just joined recently, so if, uh, unfortunately we couldn't uh, find Philip this past week. So I'm not sure what um, they were doing lately in working group two, but it's um, from what I hear from Philip, 
the working group two was most in silence. So they were not doing a lot of work. And uh, working group two, the description in the website is responsible for evaluating, generating, and refining algorithms, protocols, supporting calibration and validation, and linking key data sets for remote sensing and in situ data sources. Uh, what I talked to Philip, uh, we are not doing so much on the evaluating and generating new algorithms but trying to work more on the protocol, supporting calibration and validation and linking to key data sets. And this will link well with the H2020 Water Force, especially with working group for, uh, working package four of Water Force, in which we're, we are doing this, especially linking remote things in situ data. So in collaboration with Water Force, we are trying to reach more on this metadata, having the same uh, 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 language, and also working on SOPs for calibration and validation. A future task that um, we are planning to launch for working group two and also for the node on calibration and validation is a metadata call. And why metadata? Uh, metadata because a lot of people, a lot of researchers do not like to share their data, especially in the global self. Uh, and then uh, that's why if we go to approach for looking for metadata, just to know who is collecting data and where they are collecting data, we can map uh, the, the, these people who are collecting data and then uh, we could reach uh, them personally and ask and talk and see if we can run some collaborations. And that's the first idea on, for the node and also for our, our work in this working group. So stay tuned that we will launch this uh, data, a metadata call and we ask all members of working group to, uh, to, to, uh, to also share this metadata call for, to everyone. Thank you. Great. Igor, just wanted to ask you for some, I see that you have put comments in the Q&A about Emily's question about whether or not you uh, will be working on coastal um, cowbell. So I'll just point everybody to take a look over there. Um, and uh, once again, just a reminder um, that uh, we will need to uh, just send me an email uh, so that I can get you connected if you want to volunteer for a working group two or any of the other working groups. Um, thank you, Igor. Uh, we're going to move on to working group three now. Sada? Yes, I hope you can see me and you. hear me. Yes. And um, I'm trying to share my screen if I can, which I cannot. <laughs> um, let me see. Okay. So apparently we are also having difficulties here <laughs> with sharing the screen. This is very strange. Let me that try might again. be it. Might be a challenge because of so many people on the stage. Um, I apologize for that. But yeah, if you could just walk us through your presentation. Yeah. So then, uh, well, I cannot share the screen, but um, maybe I can open it for myself. Then I can <laughs> see what I'm going to present. So um, the working group three is is really um, the fit for purpose uh, products. Uh, the objective is uh, identifying and, and generating, evaluating uh, products. And this is really derived from the remote sensing and the in-situ data, as well as the supporting modeling. So this is uh, where actually the three components of, of output or observation uh, that come uh, together. And uh, we are also including the data simulation activities for traditional and, and global water uh, quality. Uh, having said that, uh, this group will uh, facilitate like routine and, and sustained production of, of products and, and putting that and providing demos and, and having uh, the scientific uh, community um, absorb or actually have those products to work on. But also we are providing this information products for policymakers and decision makers and the generic pub uh, general public. Uh, we have been working extensively, uh, well, also together with uh, with a, a group of people. I do not have the list, but um, hey, we were uh, we uh, we were working uh, on a published uh, paper. So this is we have the review paper of what is out there, 
what is required from the users, linking that to the components, uh, the in situ drones, uh, uh, well, uh, what are uh, as information services present uh, at this moment or provided by others. And we have published this paper uh, in the journal Remote Sensing. The paper is called Integrating Inland and Coastal Water Quality Data for Actionable uh, Knowledge. We have also presented in an open session in ASA Living uh, Planet, uh, and, and session called EEO for Monitoring Water Quality and Ecolog Ecological Status in Inland Waters. We have presented also the working uh, group uh, in so uh, many events. Well, I have to say uh, that uh, so far we have been having uh, the lead, Blake, and, and myself as, as leaders. And um, uh, just a couple of months ago, uh, Blake um, uh, decided not to because of lack of time. Uh, so uh, I would like with that to thank uh, Blake for his effort. Uh, we are at this moment trying to reorganize ourselves to cope with the future plans, which is really uh, linking to the themes that you have uh, uh, that you have heard of. Maybe another uh, theme that is not yet presented, which is the big data and uh, the artificial intelligence. Uh, so this we would like to uh, to uh, to start working with the themes to integrate the data components into into products. We are also now in the process of putting the tools, routines, uh, somewhere in a share uh, point where people can download them, uh, the ones that we are using, the simplified ones, not, not the sophisticated models, of course not, uh, but at least to have the links to, uh, to the tools that we can use uh, to provide those uh, products. Um, also, uh, at a certain moment, we have to talk about a demo so we are setting up a demo. We would like to set up a demo uh, that uh, that have uh, the whole uh, process of uh, now cast forecast and predictions. Uh, how can we do that for a specific area? We were thinking of maybe Africa. This is related very much to digital twinning uh, of of uh, uh, of the ocean or maybe the coastal zone. I would say. Um, so. This is very much, in short, our future plans. I, it's very well, unfortunate that I cannot share the slide with you, but I'm not going to be uh, talking much more on that. So please, if you are interested in, uh, in joining the working group, um, send, send your name uh, to Mary Beth or myself, and uh, thank you. Great. Thank you very much, uh, Gada. Um, Steve Groom. Okay, can people hear me? We do, thank you. Can you see my screen? Not yet. Uh, I was determined to get this to work, <laughs> having never used air meat. So, well, I'll start talking. Um, hopefully the screen might appear. Um, so this is working Mary Beth, can you hear me? Uh, we do hear you, Steve. Um, Yes. Go ahead, Steve Groom. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just trying to find the uh, uh, the screen to share. Seems like a very convoluted system to uh, <clears throat> to actually present things. So hopefully you can see the the uh, presentation now. Yes, we do. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. So working group four fits in after products and information is to do right. with distribution. Access Mary Beth, are, are you there? So, uh, uh, working group four is responsible for uh, making products and information uh, generated by the other working groups available, notably work group three. And uh, part of this is actually making data visually appealing and broadly accessible so that data aren't just dealt with as arrays of numbers, but actually information that can be used by all and sundry. So the working group co-chairs are Megan Coffer from uh, the US uh, EPA uh, and myself in uh, Plymouth Marine Lab. So uh, very briefly, the work we've done to date is uh, back in 2019, we did an overview of uh, the water quality access and visualization system. So this was published and we looked at a number of different approaches, including the cyan system 
of the US EPA, uh, the Abalobi um, uh, mobile based system in South Africa, and a web GIS system which uh, is run at uh, PML. And, and here's just an example of an update showing data which is very relevant to Aqua Watch of the Sardo estuary in uh, Portugal, showing the kind of products that uh, uh, Aqua Watch will be providing. <clears throat> so in terms of future activities, so we are planning for a work group for get together, a virtual get together to discuss recent developments in portals, but also requirements from portals, particularly from work working group three. And I should say new uh, contributors are, uh, are very welcome to uh, come and join us. So I'll leave it as that, given the time. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, Andrew, are you able to share? Let me pull you back up on stage, Andrew. Mary Beth, can you hear me? We do hear you, Steve. Do you hear us? <laughs> yeah. Again, I've been in a black hole for about 10 minutes. Uh, I mean, if, right. there's, if there's people we don't need on the stage now, maybe. I'm we'll... here. Yes, I'm taking care of that for you. Okay. Um, yeah, we we could hear you all those times that you were speaking with us, but you couldn't hear us. So I think the issue is on your side. And Andrew has the stage right now for Working Group 5. Well, thank you very much, Mary Beth and Steve. Um, good, uh, again, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. I'm not sure I'll dare share my slides because that might just throw me out again. So I'll just uh, just talk a little bit to, to Working Group 5, which is, as you know, about uh, education and capacity building. Um, we have we have really been focused on keeping the community to connected actually over the last uh, year or more, particularly through the the pandemic. And as Steve had already highlighted, we we'd organised a, a series of webinars uh, series to uh, to take us through the year. Uh, and we had a very enthusiastic contribution from a whole range of uh, contributors to to this webinar series, which included. Uh, a day uh, on the 29th of April focused on marine coastal systems and uh, and we had six presentations there. And what we decided was actually, uh, as we can see the technical challenges, um, was to get the contributors to, to make a 10 minute video. And we essentially had those videos presented and then we, I think those materials are all available online still. And then we'd have a discussion at the at the end of that. And the key thing here was also to promote the, the, the um, the DEI, uh, the diversity, quality, uh, and inclusive uh, agenda, uh, and so we really promoted the early career uh, researchers to to host and uh, uh, these um, these webinars and also uh, chair them. So, as I said, we had a session on the marine coastal theme, and then in May the nineteenth, we had another one on the coastal transition estuaries uh, theme, and then on the eleventh. Uh, I think of May was on the inland waters uh, theme in particular, and then later in the year. Uh, we had been inundated by numbers of uh, of applications, and later in the year, we we focused uh, another webinar series on the sort of new emerging projects um, to to highlight those and showcase those in particular. So I think those are really successful, and I, and it's definitely a program that we should continue uh, doing because it provides an interesting and useful resource that's available for the community to access, uh, and and again sort of contributes to that education and uh, community building uh, as well as capacity building uh, theme. Now you may recall back in 2018, uh, we had devised a questionnaire that we sent out to a whole, well, basically the Earth Observation community, but also the, the trying to target the stakeholder community. And we did that through uh, various partners, including the UN Environment Programme, uh, Gems Water, for example, uh, as well as other partners, to try and really increase that global reach to understand, you know, uh, what's holding people back from using satellite data ultimately. Uh, what do they understand that satellite data could actually provide them in terms of uh, uh, products and services that they would benefit from? Uh, <clears throat> identify what those barriers are to using those data, and and indeed what are, what are the barriers to actually trusting those data as well. And uh, we did get a reasonable feedback. I think we had about 250 or nearly 280 engagements with the questionnaire, but unfortunately only 143 of those were completed. Um, but so, so we started to analyze that data and well, the sample size wasn't great. 
Um, but what we did was actually connect with um, uh, Lara Agnoli and Nicholas uh, Gorgensis uh, from Prime Water, uh, two very good statisticians, who helped us to really then unpack what the data was telling us. And, uh, uh, and actually, this has now resulted in uh, a publication that uh, has involved uh, uh, many of the membership here, including uh, Blake uh, um, and Erin Urquhart. Uh, Bill Kiss and Mary Beth, uh, um, amongst others as well. Uh, uh, we've also included uh, representation from the regulatory community on that as well. What was interesting very very quickly is it actually highlighted issues in terms of you know what 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 was required in terms of uh, uh, or the expectations is required in terms of access and interpretability of the data. Um, there was generally a positive opinion about uh, the usefulness of Earth observation data. Uh, and there's, it really does fulfill, um, you know, a gap in in, uh, in in data needs and requirements around the world. Um, there is a high level of trust, actually, with satellite water quality data, and even higher if it's associated with in situ Earth observation data, in situ measurements, to coupled with that. So, generally, quite a positive um, response. Although, interestingly, the positivity wasn't so so great. With the more senior the person uh, who responded to that that questionnaire. So that in itself is also quite interesting. Um, so uh, one of the one of the key challenges is the, the complexity of the data in terms of you know the different locations in which data uh, is to be found. And there's a very confusing array of web resources, often making it difficult or even impossible to access. And these are key challenges. I think will help us to to help steer you know next phases of work in term, in terms of what AccuWatch needs to focus in on. So those are sort of the main activities that we've been doing over what has been quite a difficult time. Capacity building has been embedded with a number of projects. So Steve, for example, leads the Cherto project, and that includes a capacity building element to it to try and train uh, uh, individuals outside maybe the, the direct partners within projects. Um, but again, you know, COVID has been somewhat limiting in terms of how we do that. And certainly we've been helping uh, a number of projects and partners indeed around the world by sharing equipment to help them acquire data, particularly the WISP instrument, which has been useful to ship around the world. So um, we, we have had a very useful session three earlier this week, uh, which has highlighted, you know, opportunities of where needs are for, for capacity building. And we will analyze that data from the Myra board and use that to really build the plan going forward for the next few years for, for Working Group 5. Critically, this working group is led by Bilkus Hoke and myself, um, but we do need more contributions, more people to come into this and help shape this program going forward. And I will revisit the existing membership to make sure people are still content to be members, but I'm really, again, looking for additional members to join the team. I think that's it for me now. If you can still hear me, that is. Okay, thanks, Andrew. Thanks. Um, so let's just finish up uh, with Jeremy, give him a minute or two to talk about his node concept. Hi, Steve. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Perfect. Great. Um, yeah, hi everyone. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Jeremy Kravitz. I'm a, a postdoc at uh, NASA Ames Research Center in California. And um, yeah, as Steve mentioned, I'm working on a node concept. Um, I've been having trouble securing dedicated time at NASA to kind of turn it into a full fledged operational um, node. But I'm sorry, I'm on. Uh, got my one year old here. I'm on baby duty. So, um, but the con the idea behind the concept is to bring in big data analytics and machine learning and um, and advanced modeling to um, increase our capability for providing um, high fidelity global products, uh, water quality products that can be used in both coastal and inland water settings. Um, this is kind of spurred from my own research that is working towards building a, an end to end simulator um, based on uh, synthetic data and, and artificial intelligence and how we can um, integrate these types of models into a or and scale them up to a global setting in a cloud computing platforms such as Google Earth Engine. We had a nice conversation yesterday at the Google Earth Engine um, poster about 
what it takes to be able to integrate and port, you know, machine learning models on a global capacity. Um, so these are the types of things I'm interested in. Um, and also in terms of hyperspectral analysis, uh, where do we go from um, being able to, with the upcoming generation of hyperspectral satellites, you know, how are we going to be able to uh, process and how can we leverage this increased amount of spectral data to provide, um, you know, high fidelity water quality information. Um, yep. So uh, we're at the top of the hour now, so I'll, I'll kind of just leave it at that. But um, thank you, everyone. Okay, thank you, Jeremy. Um, so that concludes um, our, our session here, session eight. We're going to move um, directly into session nine, which is a community breakouts. Um, as I previously mentioned, we really would appreciate uh, all your, your help here and um, participation in these breakout groups. We have something, well, we have 34, four people right now. So, you know, maybe we'd only need uh, three of the, the tables, if you will. Um, one programming note, um, besides the, um, the session now, um, we are also running the session later um, today at 2100 UTC. So if it's getting quite late or it, it doesn't, it's not convenient for you now, um, we do have an alter, alternate time, which you can come and participate in the, the community session. If you want to, um, you know, when you get into the session, please, um, you know, talk, talk amongst the folks at your table and maybe designate somebody to, um, who wants to be the facilitator or who can uh, lead the effort when we come back into um, session tomorrow. Um, and please uh, utilize the mural board and put your thoughts on there and populate the, the board that uh, we can work off of that. Okay, um, with that, I'm getting, yep. Okay, thank you very much. And we'll see you back here after this uh, breakout session, there will be a poster session in an hour. So you can go out now.